and welcome back to another video. Today's video is about vampires. <laughs> Today I'm specifically going to be focused on an interview with the vampire. I have seen this movie way too many times to count. And I thought today I would go over the differences between the book and the movie. You'd think they're exactly the same. Nay, nay, they are not. The movie does have the majority of the story from the book, but there are a few changes here and there. So I thought today I would go over the changes in case you didn't know them. And, uh, yeah, let's get into it. To start off, in the book, Louis' brother dies. He actually falls off a balcony, jumps off a balcony, something of the sort which starts out his depression, uh, his brother dying. In the movie, it's his wife and child that causes him to be depressed. Um, so it's a slight difference, but difference nonetheless. In the book, Lestat turned Louis for money, his house, and his sick father for the pride of it, the slaves, uh, things like that, basically for money. Turn Louis for money and his sick father which he treats like shit. <laughs> in the movie, that is no such thing. Um, Louis is depressed over his wife and child, and Lestad follows him, attacks him in a pier, which somehow no one saw that, then returns for him and says he can make him live forever. Now, it is in the movie that he does care about money and the wealth of it. He does like having slaves. You know, he does enjoy the house, but there's no sick father... And, um, you know, it's a lot more, um, straight. <laughs> In the book, Louis and Lestad share a coffin the first night, as Louis doesn't have a coffin yet. In the movie, they just cut that out and have Louis have his own coffin. Um, but in the book, they do cuddle in a coffin. <laughs> in the book, uh, turning took time. Uh, it wasn't just an instant... In the movie, it's not instant, but it's much faster, um, especially with Claudia. It just happens very quickly, and um, the same thing happens with Louis. It's a quick process. In the book, it takes a little longer to actually uh, happen, <laughs> so they kind of sped up the process uh, of turning. Also, one of the characters looks nothing like his book counterpart, Armand. In the movie, he's played by Antonio Banderas black hair. He does look young, but he's not young, young. Um, and, uh, he's pretty cool. But in the book, however, Armand is ginger and Russian and 17 years old. Very different to, from a Russian ginger 17 year old to Antonio Banderas. Oh, it's a, quite a difference. Um, <laughs> very different in looks. But they were going for sexy suave, and at the time, Antonio Banderas was one of those people where everyone's like, oh! Another change is, um, in the book, Louis and uh, Armand uh, grow close. They actually stay together, um, rather than, um, well, they grow closer. In the movie, he's just like, now, goodbye! Another thing that they cut out of the movie is Claudia's death. No, that's in the movie, obviously. But in the movie, when Claudia dies, he lights the whole place on fire. He's really pissed off. Um, Armand tries to get him out. He does, but he doesn't trust him. And, you know, he gets revenge. In the book, however, it is revealed that Lestad is the reason this happened. Uh, he showed up to be behind Claudia's death. Because he ain't dead. In the book, they travel Europe trying to find vampires like Lestat, you know, better than Lestat, but they find, like, creatures that aren't really, they're not human anymore. I mean, vampires aren't human, but they're very grotesque and zombie-like, basically. And they're traveling Europe and eventually make it to Paris. In the movie, they mention traveling, but it's mostly they just go straight to Paris. Like, they don't show anything. They're just like, whoop, Paris! Woo! -hoo! And speaking of Claudia, in the book, Claudia is five years old. In the movie, I believe they still try to make her be five or six, but she is played by an actress who is ten. So, you know, she's closer. She's not looking like a six-year-old. In the book series, Gabrielle was the first to show that cutting your hair grows back. 
I believe it happens in the second book where Lestad turns his mother, I believe it's the second book, turns his mother and she's unhappy because it happens and she tries to cut her hair but every time she cuts her hair it grows back. Uh, she was the first to show that that does occur. In the movie, they decided to show that with Claudia, where she tries chopping off her hair and it grows back. In the book, Louis does kill a slave, um, and he feels really bad about it. He's, like, basically vomiting. He's just very heartbroken, like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. In the movie, they decided to just cut that part out. One of the major changes is the ending. In the movie, it ends with... The reporter wanting to become a vampire, Louis going, oh, I failed again, vanishing, leaving the reporter with all his tapes. The reporter gets in the car, starts driving off, listening to them, when Lestad appears out of nowhere and attacks him while he's driving, almost crashing the car. It ends with Lestad basically implying he's going to turn him, and they drive off down the bridge. In the book, however, that does not happen. I beg you, give it all one more chance. One more chance in me, said the boy. The vampire turned him, his face as twisted with anger as before, then gradually began to become smooth. The lids came down slowly over his eyes, and his lips lengthened in a smile. He looked again at the boy. I failed, he sighed, smiling still. I have completely failed. No, the boy protested. Don't say any more, said the vampire empathetically. I have but one chance left. Do you see the reels? They still turn. I have but one way to show you the meaning of what I've said. And then he reached out for the boy so fast the boy found himself grasping for something, pushing against something that was not there. So his hand was outstretched still when the vampire had him pressed to his chest, the boy's neck bent beneath his lips. Do you see? whispered the vampire. The long silky lips drew up over his teeth, and two long fangs came down into the boy's flesh. The boy stuttered, a low guttural sound coming out of his throat. His hand struggled to close on something, his eyes widening only to become dull and gray as the vampire drank. And the vampire, meantime, looked as tranquil as someone in sleep. His narrow chest heaved so subtly with the sigh that he seemed to be rising slowly from the floor, and sending again with the same, some ambulistic grace. There was a whine coming from the boy, and when the vampire let him go, he held him out with both hands and looked at the damp white face, the limp, the limp hands, and the eyes half-closed. The boy was moaning, his lower lip loose and trembling, as if in nausea. He moaned again louder, and his head fell back, and his eyes rolled up into his head. The vampire set him down gently in the chair. The boy was struggling to speak, and the tears which sprang down to his eyes seemed to come as much from the effort to speak as from anything else. His head fell forward, heavily, drunkenly, and his hand rested on the table. The vampire stood looking down on him, and his white skin became a luminous pink. It was as if the pink light was shining on him, and his entire being seemed to give back that light. The flesh of his lips was dark, almost rose in color, and the veins of his temples and his hands were mere traces on his skin, and his face was youthful. And smooth. Will I die? The boy whispered as he looked up slowly, his mouth wet and slack. Will I die? He groaned, his lip trembling. I don't know, the vampire said, and he smiled. The boy seemed on the verge of saying something more, but the hand that rested on the table slid forward on the boards, and his head lay down beside it as he lost consciousness. The reporter then wakes up to find Louis gone, and instead of going after Louis, he listens, he understands where Lestat is, and decides to go find him. So he does go to Lestad and does become a vampire, if you've read the books. Um, but in the first book, Louis actually bites him, and then he goes off to look for Lestad, instead of Lestad attacking him on a bridge and Louis just vanishing. Which I kind of like the book ending better, but that's my opinion. Overall, the main thing that they changed that I don't like is the gay shit! The gay shit, the gay shit. And you're like, what gay shit? I'll tell you what gay shit. In the book, you can clearly tell there's a lot more sensual love between Lestad and Louis. The turning scene for one. Now listen to me, Louis, he said. And he lay down beside me on the steps, his movement so graceful and so personal that at once it made me think of a lover. I recoiled, but he put his right arm around me and, closed, and pulled me in close to his chest. Never had I been this close to him before, and in the dim light I could see the magnificent radiance of his eye and the unnatural mask of his skin. As I tried to move, he pressed his two f his right fingers against my lips and said, Be still. I am going to drain you now to the very threshold of death, and I want you to be quiet, so quiet that you can almost hear the flow of blood through your veins, so quiet that you can hear the flow of that same blood through mine. It is your consciousness, your will, which must keep you alive. 
I wanted to struggle, but he pressed so hard with his fingers that he held my entire prone body in check. And as soon as I stopped my abortive attempt at rebellion, he sank his teeth into my neck. They hate each other, but they also kind of love each other. Lestad turns a child so that Louis does not leave him, so they can be a family. In the movie, this also occurs, but it's less lovey- I mean, it wasn't lovey-dovey in the book, but you could clearly tell there was more love behind it. Lestad has a very toxic way of showing love. He gets better at it throughout the books. Um, but he did that so that Louis wouldn't leave him. And uh, there's a few other moments throughout the book that are a lot more sensual than the movie allowed. The two actors were not comfortable with making it that way. Um, and they're both straight guys, so I get it. But they should have gotten actors who would be more comfortable doing something like that. Because they, they made it more straight. When it's clearly obvious that both vampires love each other. Now, it's not like they make out or anything, but you can clearly tell there's a bond there. And it's a lot more gay than it is besties! You know, there's something else there um, that they just try to avoid in the movie. They're just like, ah! Ah! Like, I didn't know this. Like, I watched the movie first. And I went, this is, this is really good. I like this. And then I read the book and went, how dare they? How dare they? How could they do such things? But that is my opinion. Comment down below what you guys think. If I missed anything, let me know. And if you agree that the sensuality of the vampires in the book should be moved into the movie, or make a remake, that's it. I agree. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will be back on Thursday with another True Crime Thursday, and Monday with whatever I decide to post. Alright guys. I'll see you later.